slightly overcast day, headed to Epcot Center. Tomorrow, heading out of town for about a week or so. So today, I figured I'd pop into Epcot. It's been a little while since I went inside this particular park. So today, that's what's happening. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here as a recording of this Thursday, I think it's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, April 11th, 2024. I parked over here in the Crush parking lot, which is kind of coincidental because I'm gonna be seeing some sea life today. In fact, I have my SeaWorld shirt on. Bought an annual pass at SeaWorld and checked out some of the aquatic creatures over there the other day. I thought today I'll step into the living with the land. The land, not land, what am I saying? What I meant to say was the living seas. I'm going to discover and crush the living seas. You can see discover kind of bleeding through there. And then now I'm in crush 206. I'm opting to walk and not take the tram, which is going by right there. But as with everything I do on video, in these vlogs, I'm inviting you to join me. It's good to have you here. Shall you? It's about 11.30 right now. It's 84 degrees, but it really does not feel that warm because it is overcast and windy. It's gonna be raining around two or three. Maybe I'll get out of here by then. But for now, it feels really good. Even though there are oh, it is very windy. Even though the trams are here. It's not that far of a walk, so I'm just gonna take the short little, I'm gonna hoof it up to the front of the park. Oh, nice. Getting two transportation devices in one. Tram will obviously beat me up to the front there. But take a look. You got the monorail going by, running parallel to the tram. I don't even know if I'm gonna go into World Showcase today. I might just do a Future World, or what used to be called Future World. I'm sure there's probably some low wait times and some uh, some living seas. Living with the seas. And then maybe the land pavilion. You know, just stuff around the front of the park. Sea life at Disney World. I guess you could kind of say I'm wearing an appropriate shirt. Kind of, sort of, in a roundabout way. No Shamu here, though. Well, there's no Shamu at SeaWorld anymore, either. Sideways pylons are sideways. Stanchions. Circle tour, dropping off the guests. Now spinning around. I was surprised I even squeezed into this shirt. It's a little, a little snug, but I squeezed into it. Purchased it the other day. Sporting it today. Squeezed into it. Squeezed. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. And I think it might be a little snug. I don't know why I'm focusing on the shirt so much. Also, I need coffee. Coffee is needed. Ah, uh, monorail coming by, and it is windy. The flags up there are waving proficiently in the breeze. Holy goodness. I was in Denver a few days ago, and it was very gusty. It was almost like tropical storm, hurricane force gusts. Not solid wind, but it was very, very windy. I almost say it's that windy here, but I think maybe the wind followed me. Look at, look at that. And I'm also sporting some new shorts down here. I guess this would be kind of orange, orangish, orange-ish shorts. I guess you could label that as that. But yeah, I'm going with a different color palette today, right there. Go with a little co different color scheme. Directly under Spaceship Earth is basically a wind tunnel. You can also see a pretty good line for Spaceship Earth as well. Whenever meteorologists and news in Florida, when they're focusing on bad weather and storms, they always show the palm tree because even the slightest wind will make a palm tree look like it is the most insane storm ever. I mean, it's gusty, but that, that's the move. You just show palm tree leaves because you can just like blow out of your mouth and, and a palm tree leaf will do that. I'm not saying it's not windy, but yeah. Check out the reflection of Spaceship Earth and another spherical object right here. Starbucks. It's coffee time. Coffee time. I do like Joffrey's a lot, but I like, I'm starting to like Starbucks more just because the coffee's a little hotter and the size of the coffees are bigger. Plus when you're standing here, you can stand on the original Progress City map and Epcot layout right here. Now take a look, there's the little center, center of Progress City, which turned into Epcot. A little hidden 
little hidden things here in the Starbucks line and my shorts. While I'm waiting for my drip coffee to be prepared, just looking at the little artwork in here. I like these. I did a good job with this. The refurb in the completely new area over here. I really like this little section. Okay, yesterday I got a little Mickey balloon, a little Mickey ears drawn on a little a little string to simulate a Mickey balloon today. No Mickey, no Mickey balloon. Just Adam. Yeah, check out the wind right there. Oh, the door's closing. I thought I would get like a nice little angle out the tree. But the, oh, the, the door's opening again. Okay, the door's closed. Open, door's open, door's closed, and the leaves are blowing. And you know what? I'm going to do something a little out of the ordinary. Usually I will do the seas with Nemo and friends before I go into the Living Seas Pavilion. But I'm just going to go in through, not going to exit through the gift shop. I'm going to go in through the gift shop. I'm gonna do the ride. That right there is how I feel on a cheat day. I've been doing pretty good on my uh, my weight loss, but every once in a while I have a day where I feel like this. It happens. I've also never noticed this sign. So C base Alpha. Well, it just says C base. It's the if you don't want to do the the live the Nemo attraction, you can just go this direction. All right, I am in. Looking at the squids and the octopi right through here. Ocean. Adventures. I've never really perused over the merchandise in here before. There is a manatee. Manatee. Now they have two manatees here as well that I believe cannot be put back out into the wild. They are taking care of them here. There's a turtle. There's a different turtle right down here. Now this is just a stuffed version of a manatee, but I'm going to show the, the two manatees they have, the real manatees that they have here in the tank. Now it's kind of hard to read because it's a little shadowed out over here, but this is from the American Society of Civil Engineers that was founded back in 1852. Now this is date stamped 1987 and it was an award by them to the Living Seas Pavilion, Civil Engineering Achievement of Merit right here on the side of the wall as you're exiting out. Yeah, so you don't have to go through the attraction. You can just walk right in through the gift shop. Oh, I've never noticed that up there either with the, the, the moving waters on the little circular section right there. Now they even have a scuba tank here as well. So you can do scuba diving if you're certified. I am not certified. Don't know if I ever will be, but that's what that tube over here is for. That's what this dive lockout chamber is for. Yeah, there's like old, there's old photos and videos all over, all over the web of, you know, Mickey going up in here and other people who were scuba diving going up in there. Also, John Ritter of Three's Company fame, one of my favorite people, was, did the opening ceremony for The Living Seas. And also, he did it for MGM Studios. I believe I remember that correctly, that and he was in here doing the opening day special. The eel can swim backwards almost as well as they can swim forward. That is very interesting, and most eels do not have scales. Look at that, there's an eel right there. There's a, look at that, there's a slithering eel down in the top, and there's like the top of his head. Right there, there's his mouth and his eyes. You see, he's like looking up at the rock. He doesn't want to make eye contact. Just staring upward instead of making eye contact. And that one's making eye contact. Hard eye contact. Wow. Whoa, Look at that. Thing, huh? it's wiggling around. It's like an animatronic. It's real. It's a real, it's a real eel. It's awesome. Hello there. That is close up with an eel. You just want to like reach out and touch it. You don't really want to do that though. I mean, you could probably touch the glass. You never want to knock on the glass. So keep your, you know, you want, you never want to knock on it and disturb the animal. It's tempting, but that's one thing I've learned about aquariums. You don't want to like disturb the fish or the the eels by by knocking on them. They don't, they know you, they know you're there. You don't need to get their attention. The elaborate colors of the lionfish warn potential predators of the fish is venomous. This is a venomous fish right here. So it might appear to be safe. You do not want to try to pet it because this thing is full of venom. There are 300 species of venomous fish 
worldwide. Right down there on that starfish is a seahorse. There's a seahorse right there. Ooh, a little fish going by at rapid speed. And look at this little cute little fish right down there. But I do love that seahorse. Take a look at that seahorse right there. Just hanging out, befriending the starfish right there. There's another seahorse right over there amongst the, the aquatic shrubs. Yeah, these really are the, the coolest things, those seahorses right there. There's a couple of them over there as well. Ooh, look at these things. Look at those little, like, jagged, pointy fish right there with the seahorses all going by. What the? Look at like, like little, like, needle fish. Look at that, like little needle fish swimming around. Yeah, just all of them just enjoying the day out in there in the water right there. Oh, here we go. Lisa just said it was Nemo's mom going on. Yeah. Now I gotta take the stairs up. There's also an escalator, there's also stairs to the second level aquarium right here. You're gonna see the top portion of the manatees. You can also get a look at them from down at the lower level. All right, their names are Lou, who's 2,130 pounds. And Lil Joe is 1,820 pounds. Lou had a boat strike. That's why Lou is here. So he's just over a ton. It's a ton is 2,000 pounds. So a little over a ton is Lou. A boat strike and Lil Joe is an orphan. So I don't know what happened to the, the parents of both of them. But in the wild, they eat seagrass. And 10 to 15% of their body weight is what they eat. But in rehab, they eat romaine lettuce. 70 to 150 heads a day. Hours spent eating, six to eight hours a day. Goodness. Now I can't tell from here which one is which. I'm gonna guess that Lou probably has a noticeable blemish because of the boat strike. So maybe that's Lou over there on the top. And this down here is Lil Joe. Is that Joe on the bottom down there? That's Joe, okay. So that's Little Joe, and that's Lou at the top. And you can see where the the propeller of the boat got Lou over there. I just love the manatees that are in here. They're all under rehab. Manatees are so cute. Can you identify manatee behavior in the wild? Resting, flipper hit, tail flip, ab crunch. Ooh, that would be good. They got some abs and a barrel roll and a fast travel. Right over there. Okay, you see his tail. See the, the tail area there. And look, there almost looks like a third one in there, but it's the shadow. It's the shadow down there from the top. That's a lot. They eat a lot of lettuce. And evidently, they have divers go in there on occasion, and they have the diver suits up there as well. Oh, here's the different areas that the manatees are. Let me zoom in on this. So most of the ones I've seen have been West Indian manatees. Right over here. Take a look. They get a length from 10 to 13 feet. If you go down to South America, there is Amazonian manatees, 8 to 10 feet, a little smaller. And then there is the sea cow. Okay, I've always heard the terminology of manatees called a sea cow, the stellar sea cow. Look at the, oh, this says they're extinct. Okay. 24 to 30 feet. Holy Lord, that would be very scary to see. They're extinct though, they're gone. Yeah, you can really get a look at his tail there where the boat strike was. He's just like enjoying the little, the little time in the water here, floating around. Probably letting that lettuce settle. About to consume some more lettuce. That's what they eat is lettuce. All right, over in this other area is the dolphin over there swimming around. I'm not sure if there's more than the one in here. I'm not seeing it. Oh, there's one right there. There's the, maybe the same one. Oh, there's two. There's two dolphins. Okay, there's one there. There's a big fish that just went by. Well, it's, a little, it's actually a small fish, but in my camera it looked a lot larger. Is this dolphin going to come say hello? You coming in? You coming in? Hello, dolphin. Then you follow the path down and there's this little circular veranda of sorts that goes completely around to look at the aquariums from all the different angles. Oh, doing some tricks, like flipping around right there. Look at that, swimming upside down. Swimming upside down, going directly over the top. And I, went, I don't know if the tank goes over this, probably not. All right, show me what you got. Show me what you got, give me a trick. Nope, no trick, just swimming normally. That's fine too. 
then coming a proper school of fish. Notice how most of them all kind of swim together. Except this big one up there. He's a loner. He's just kind of like on his own. And they are all circled around. Appears to be like there might be a leader. Like the one at the front is the one that designates. Okay, turn to the left, turn to the right. Let's go down. Let's go up. Let's bob sideways. Let's go this way. So one turns and then they all just kind of follow. Follow around. Oh my lord. That, look at this thing. That is a manta ray right there. I could have worn my Tampa Bay Rays hat. I didn't think about that. Look at, there's two of them. They're meeting up and saying hello. A little sting manta ray. I don't know. What's ever seen a manta ray and a stingray? The guy behind me saying stingray. I don't know if that stings. I don't want to find out, but the man, I think it might be a manta ray. It could be a manta stingray. I think you might you could combine the two. Oh, wow. There's a guy in here. There's a scuba diver in here. There's another one over there. Man, scuba diving right now. Oh, there's a hidden Mickey on the ground, too. Oh! Look at that. There's a hidden Mickey on the ground down there in rocks. Look at that. It's just like chilling, putting out the vibe. I'd give it away. What's he doing? Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is cool. Look at this. Watch him Get a meal up. How can you make them? Don't put your mouth in the window. Look at him. Step back. Wow. How did he do that? Yeah. Oh, there's a shark right there. <laughs> Everyone's so excited. I love it. Okay, I was wondering what they're doing down there. It looks like cleaning the coral. Cleaning the coral down there. So evidently, if you are, if you do have your diving certificate, I don't know what that means because I've never dove before, but if you have that certification, you can dive in these tanks. I don't know how it works, but I've known people that have done it. Maybe I should just probably ask them. and explaining things. That's who's, do, that's who's talking right there with the microphone. And so our divers are down there scrubbing the algae off the I think that dolphin maybe just scratched his tummy there. Instead of scratching the back, he just like went parallel to the coral. They were saying you should never touch coral in the wild. The only reason that they are cleaning the coral is because it's here in the tank.
napping earlier. Now they're awake, chowing down. Get that lettuce. Get that salad. Get that salad. There you go. There you go. different kind. It's not straight lettuce. That looks more like a cabbage -y type of lettuce. She went over there, filled out a little form, keep track of what they're being fed. And now she's throwing in a, this looks like cabbage -esque. Thing has a method to it, so she's writing down exactly what they're fed, like how much each of them are getting per hour. Just, it's just so peaceful and entertaining to just watch manatees eat. Got a little crowd here watching. You can look out this window but down onto the main atrium area as well. All right, that was pretty pretty peaceful and nice. Oh, another one. The big head of us. And there's a little, well, there's a little clownfish right there. A little tiny clownfish. I mean, this thing is like probably the size of like my pinky. Tiny clownfish. This is called a cuttlefish. See it down there's a couple of them. There's one right there on the rock. Here's another swimming by. Get a better view with that. But it's called a. That is a cuttlefish. A very unique looking sea creature, right? Very unique looking. It says here that Disney Conservation supports nonprofit organizations work below to protect coral reef ecosystems. Here's kind of an example. Some of them right in here, smaller versions. Hello, you're making serious eye contact right there. How you doing? Love the coral, don't you? Gotta take the stairs down. The walkway is closed. This is not moving. Sorry for the inconvenience. Cannot take the narrow. This is almost as narrow. Reminds me of the escalators of the Contemporary. They're very narrow like that too. But it's not working. Everyone's got to take a shot. Ah, here's the underbelly of both of them right up there. So of course, they're grazing on that, that sweet, delicious lettuce. They're going above me now. There's one and there's the other one right over there. So there's two levels to look at the manatees. I got to be honest, I can't tell you the last time I spent this much time in here. Usually I do the attraction, do the ride, jump off the ride, take a quick little gander around. It's nice to kind of soak it in and not be in a rush to move on to, there's just so much to do at Epcot. It's kind of nice to just pop in here and take your time perusing around the living seas. That is a shark right there. Look at that shark head. That's, a, that's not a real shark. And there is Bruce. Fish are friends, not food. I wonder if clownfish taste funny. They do not want to bite you. We do not want to bite you. Don't wear shiny jewelry into the ocean. Don't splash around. Don't go in too deep. And if you see a dolphin, it does not mean it's safe to swim. They eat what we eat, so we might be nearby. If you see a dolphin, it does not mean it's safe to swim. Interesting. Do not bother a shark. I mean, that goes with that. I'm not going to bother any sharks and don't swim alone. This also goes for Piranha. I've seen the movie Piranha and Piranha 2, which I think James was one of James Cameron's first films. And if you have an open wound, if you're bleeding, those Piranha will come on you just like a shark will. Anyway, I learned that from James, the James Cameron classic Piranha 2. And of course, they added many years ago the friends of the living of the seas with Nemo and friends. I had a trouble with that. But it's basically the same kind of clamshell you get 
on the Little Mermaid attraction. I like, I like both of them. I prefer the Nemo ride here better than the Disneyland overlay they did on the subs, on the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea subs. But again, I've gone on it a lot of times and you don't really see a lot of the aquariums going through there. So just focus on the aquarium and again, escalators down. We have an escalator down. That's also the exit right there. That's why I'm not showing anybody because they're all exiting right over there. Ooh, look at this wind coming through here. It is whipping up out here. It is about to, we're about to have some precipitation and a little, little Florida, a little midday Florida storm is about to, a little spring storm is about to happen, it feels like. Oh, wow. Yeah, again, just point at the, just point at the trees. Makes it more dramatic. It's definitely windy though, I'm not gonna lie. It's definitely windy out here. Ooh, I'm getting a little, I'm getting misted on from this angle. The upside down waterfall, the PVC fountain. I refer to it a couple of different ways while I'm waiting for the monorail. I haven't done one of these in a while. I've shown the monorail, but I don't know if I've said this in a while. I think I'm going to, with the, with the, with the mist hitting me with the wind. There goes the monorail. That was a good one. That was a real good one. All right, from here, the weather, I don't know, the weather looks pretty bad. I don't know, I don't know if I might just actually leave. Now, I thought about maybe going on Spaceship Earth on the way out, but take a look, it is temporarily closed, Spaceship Earth. I cannot thank the Phoenicians. Well, I mean, I can, but I can thank them from here, but I can't thank them on the ride vehicle right now because Spaceship Earth is down. Definitely has nothing to do with the wind, though. That's an indoor attraction. And it is, in fact, true. There is no line, and the cast members are stopping people from going in, so it is, in fact, not quite operational. Everyone is running for the exit, for whatever reason. I guess the rain is starting. Everyone's now gonna be tucked away under the bowels of Spaceship Earth. You see everyone kind of walking at a brisk pace and or running to seek shelter. Be quite a congregation of us underneath Spaceship Earth, under the bowels, under the nether regions of Spaceship Earth. Maybe it'll open. Maybe we can all go in and thank the Phoenicians and the dryness and out of the elements of a spring Florida storm. All right, I'm seeing umbrellas now. Everyone's got the ponchos and umbrellas out, so it officially has started raining. I did not make it back to the car in time. Not a lot of leaves on that tree to see the gustiness of the wind, but you can tell by the flags right there, and you can also tell by the flags over there as well. Still very breezy, and now it's raining. Ooh, I kind of wish I would have gone over to the land pavilion. That guy just lost his umbrella. I wonder if I could make it over to the land. Old strong over there, U.S. flag. You got this. I am in a serious wind tunnel underneath this thing. I'm kind of just waiting it out, either to head over to the land, head to my car, or po quite possibly in hopes that Spaceship Earth will open. Seriously windy. This is like the most epic wind tunnel going this direction. Turn this way. Look at my hair. Tornado watch. These conditions are expected until 3 o'clock. It's 126 right now. Goodness gracious, that's not good. I thought it was a little windier than it should be. I mean, that was not a normal gust. 
All right. All right. I think I might try to get over to the land pavilion. I think I'll be better in there for the next half hour and pretty much the next ha hour and a half from from 1.30 until 3, it's a 100% chance of rain. And this is the the satellite view of the storms that are that are rolling through. Should I just bail? Should I go over to the land? I feel like I want to ride the land in a, in a tornado watch. Run for the hill. Well, they're on the hill. Run for the non-hill. Up this little birdie down here. Birdie's not not too terrified. Ooh, the rain's coming down sideways. I'm kind of stuck here. I can't go to my car. I can't go to the land. All right, there was a very brief lull in the action. So I decided to go ahead and head out. Didn't want to head over to the land and then get stuck in there if the weather got a little worse. And to get home, get a little packing done for a trip that's starting tomorrow. Gonna to be gone for a series of days, about a week or more, give or take a day. Let's say a week or a week or a day, give or take a day. One week, give or take a day. I'm, I'm having trouble saying that. I'm gonna get back to the car before, before this rain starts coming down again. Very, very windy. I parked over in a crush. I remember that because I saw some sea life. It started off as a sea life video. And then it turned into a tornado in the area video. It's still happening. In fact, I think the lull is ending. So I gotta get back over to the car before the next outer band rolls through. Well, that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is. Over. Thanks for watching.